How long have you been seeking, working, and praying to be a better man, better for your wife, your children, and everyone around you? Well, let's listen to Pastor Calvin as he talks about what it means to allow God's mindset to take over ours and lead us to be exactly who he has made us to be. Check it out. So let's, let's define kingdom. Rule or authority. Kingdom means rule or authority. In reference to God, it's the rule of God in heaven on earth. This includes now and eternity. So when you talk about a kingdom mindset, you're talking about a, a fixed, mental, predetermined attitude based on what God has told you to be, based on the authority God has given you, that predetermines our responses and our interpretations and our attitudes to any situation. We're taking what God and the Word of God is saying, and we're going to apply it in every single area of our lives. We're going to take the Word of God. We're going to take his, his, his principles because it, 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 it either it's a direct word in the Bible or it's a principle to follow. Don't give me it ain't in the Bible, so I'm going to just do it. It's a principle in there somewhere for it. He says take that predetermined fix. That means you, you're fixed. This is what you are. This is what, how you roll. This is what you do. You ain't all over the place. This is who you are. It, and it, predetermine, it pre, uh, predetermines. So you already have your position. You already have your decision you're going to make based on a situation or an uh, 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 issue that route rises, even in your family, even individually, even in relationships, even in church, even in education, even in your money. You look at the word the word of God says, you look at the principles of the scripture, and you apply it and pull it into your life. Watch this. Our predetermined responses, our, pre, our predetermined response and interpretation of life situation will be viewed, understood, perceived, and governed by God's rule and authority. That's the kingdom mindset. Our, our viewpoints, understanding, per perception, policies, actions are controlled by God through the Holy Spirit and his word. We gotta, I want y'all to leave here. I told you it's going to be a teaching series. So I'm going to read a lot more than I'm, I'm trying to not to preach as much and read more. So y'all, we can really grasp this. Because when we go into our vision and our word for the year, I really want us to understand the foundational thing that's going to make the boat go. Give me my question of the day. Is God first? And I want him to make it really big like that. Because this is a, this is a, this is a life change choice right now. Taking on the kingdom mindset is a life decision. It's not a Sunday I felt good decision. This is a, you leave here and you start, begin to study the word of God so you can see how to live. So you can be a clean vessel. Nobody goes to the kitchen and grabs a cup out the dirty water and just pour some juice in it. You go in the cabinet. And a lot of us, you like me, even when you get the clean ones, you go and you look in it. It's a habit. I take it out of the cabinet. Okay, it's clean. I'm going to lend up myself as a clean vessel for heaven to use. Is he first? Because today in my four points where I want to talk about four things is how do we take the kingdom and put it into our life? See, I had a long, long introduction because I knew I could just go through these points. And if you either you want the kingdom or you don't, either you have gotten to the point where you're tired of yourself and you're going to get, let God have your life or you won't. I can't pressure you into that one. I can't, I can't guilt trip you into that one. Either you're in love with God like that or you, can, or you settle with being, just being a believer. It is a difference between Christians and believers. Some people believe that Jesus Christ died and rose on the grave. They believe that with everything in them, yet they live defeated, worthless life. They are useless to the kingdom of God because they will not be sanctified. They drag around in sin, they muzzle around in sin, and then they post six posts about the glory of God and they favor a favorite pastor real, and then they go right back to what they're doing. He says, I need, is he first in every area of your life? He says, a double-bodied man is unstable in all his ways. And this is what happens. We, we, we teeter in the line. We want God, but we want the world too. We want God to accept us, but we want our homies and everybody to accept us too. So we're going through life like this. And some of us get like this because we know God is true, but boy, we deep in the world. But we know he died on the cross for our sins, but we have allowed the enemy to make us useless to the kingdom. So we believe, but are we way down here struggling in just about every sin you can think of? Can't get out of nothing, can't do nothing, been living on earth for 90 years, still doing the same thing we were doing when we were 13. 
doing the same thing we were doing when we was 20, living the, making the same silly choice that we did when we were 25. Ain't changed one bit. Going to die with the same, not, not wanting to change, not ever changing, because we don't want to stop doing things, and we can't control our flesh. And let me tell I'm going to go here. Probably going to make half the church mad, but I don't care. One thing I cannot stand, and this is personal, is a weak man. God created the man in the garden before it was ever a woman and gave him his word, gave him the orders, gave him his rules, gave him dominion, gave him resources, gave him all he needed and said, have dominion. We have the authority as men. And then he gave him a woman. He said, you have authority and we'll live our entire life defeated. Never really touching the kingdom heavenly perspective. Never really taking dominion over our life. Never really loving our wives. Never really raising our kids. Never really just saying sorry. Never really just going back and loving people and telling our kids, I wasn't there for you. I'm sorry, but I'm trying now. Never really trying to get it together. And we live like weak, useless men with muscles, with a six pack. Thinking we strong, but we weaker, and in the image of in the sight of God, he like, ah, man, what a waste of testosterone that I gave him. All he gonna do is just go to the streets and try to buy a Hellcat wild body charger and and stunt with his seventeen chains on and his good, his grill. He not even gonna even try to live for me. He not gonna try to be for me, but he gonna be for himself his whole life. Dang, well, kids begging and crying, wishing they could see you. I ain't seen you in weeks, but you got stop by with a Christmas present with some Jordans and thought your job was done. And we have weak manhood out here. And that's why our culture and society is how it is. Because the men will not stand up and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We're going to live clean. We're going to honor him. I'm going to love my wife. And how I love her, you give up yourself. You go down so she can go up. So I don't care about what she did to you. I don't care about how she made you feel. I don't care that she tripping. Okay, and what did you do? I don't care. And what did you do? Like, and how did you respond? Did you respond with love? Did you meet her with I don't care if your kids act the crazy. What did you do? That's what we were built for. It. And we allowed the enemy to drag us away into all this other stuff that's, that's popular and good. And one thing I cannot stand sometimes, I see these reels pop up on my timeline, and they'll talk about how he the king. And the, the women got to understand how to, what the king go through. In society and support your king. I'm like, <laughs> we really feel for that? No, king, support your queen. Serve your family. Dot to yourself for your family. Why are we programming ourselves to make our family serve us? Why are we programming people to make sure your wife fix your food? When y'all come to me, marriage enrichment, I tell the man, get up and make your wife plates. Because they sit there and like, what you want, give me two ribs? No, get up, and you go serve her. Well, I'm trying to reverse this thing that we've done where the man sits there like he King Tut. And the kids serve him. I remember old school, the man sat there first, and he got his plate. The kids, nobody ate until he got his. That's ridiculous. He's supposed to be serving the family. He's supposed to be making sure they're good. He's supposed to be the last one asleep. Like, how do we mess this up? I get honoring him. I get that. But what we've done is a mindset now, and now the family is weakened because the man won't stand up. Yeah. Right. Let me leave that alone. That's always one of them. We are serving when we are loving. We are serving when we, we, when, when we are serving, we are loving. When we are loving, we're operating in the Holy Spirit. When we're serving, we're loving. When, we're op- when, we, when, we, when we love, we're operating the Holy Spirit. When we operate in the Holy Spirit, we're kingdom. How do I get the kingdom, pastor? Start serving. So when you serve, you prove you have love in you because you can go down so somebody can go up. Go up. You, can, you can compassionately, righteously, and selflessly pursue somebody else's well-being. Now you love it. When you're loving, when you're loving, you operate in the Holy Spirit. What's the fruit of the Spirit we said every week? What's the first one? Love. Now I'm operating and producing the Holy Spirit fruit. When I'm producing Holy Spirit fruit, he's living in me and operating through me. Then I'm what? I'm kingdom. You want to know a basic, a basic principle or how you get a kingdom or how you take on a kingdom mindset. Start with serving. And then it produce a love in you. That love will produce the Holy Spirit moving in you. And that will produce a kingdom mindset.